This is Lecture Outline 9, which is Chapter 5, Part 2. We're going to now talk about electron configurations, now that we know what orbitals look like. And we're going to start with hydrogen and one electron systems. The energy of the electron is the same for all different sublevels with the same value of the principal energy level, n. We have an equation for this. These are the one electron systems and energy equals minus 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules times z squared times the quantity 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared And this equation for hydrogen in all one electron systems does not depend on sublevel. Because for one electron systems, there are only two charged particles, and it doesn't matter whether it's in 2s or 2p, um, the energy will be the same. This is only for one electron systems, only systems for which this equation works. Another thing I want to talk about here is uh, an electron in the ground state. The ground state is going to be the lowest energy state. And we find one electron here. Um, now these numbers for 0, minus 1, 0, and 1, those are actual quantum numbers. We are not dealing with the quantum numbers. What we need to know about this is for S sublevel, there is one line. Sometimes it will be a box that is for one orbital. For P, there are three orbitals, whether it's a 2P or a 3P. For D, there are five orbitals. For F, which we will see later, there are seven orbitals. Okay. Uh, the other thing we want to define is what's called an excited state. An excited state is any state with higher energy than the ground state. So for hydrogen, if the electron were, instead of being in the 1s orbital, were in the 2s or 2p, 3s, 3p, or 3d, any of those orbitals, it would be in an excited state. So there are many excited states. There's only one ground state. And uh, the ground state, uh, being the lowest energy state, uh, is similar to, if you take a pen, it is in a higher energy state. We might call this an excited state compared to when I drop it on here. Uh, that is the lowest energy state available to this pen. And that lowest energy state would be the ground state for this pen right now. For all atoms ions with more than one electron, the sublevels with the same principal energy level have different energies. So now we're using boxes, and for hydrogen, this is going to be the 1s, this is going to be 2s, and 2p. And again, these are all 2s and 2p have the same energy. For helium, 1s, 2s, 2p have different energies, with 2p being higher than 2s. And we don't have to know the relative en energies. What we have to know is the order of the uh, energy levels and how many orbitals are in each uh, energy sublevel as well. Uh, 1s, 2s, 2p for lithium. Um, it is also true that as we go from 1s for hydrogen to 1s for helium, that with two protons attracting the electrons towards the nucleus, it will pull harder on them, there will be more attraction, there will be a lower energy. Not something we really worry too much about. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes, these energies are not important. We can see the 1s going down. And that um, for uh, 2s and 2p, they have different energy levels for all but the one electron system for the hydrogen atom. All right, so the order of all the sublevels from lowest to highest energy follows the shape of the periodic table. And this order is something you have to memorize. There's a couple different ways to memorize it. Um, I'm gonna suggest you use the shape of the periodic table. Uh, there are other patterns that you can draw. It uh, doesn't matter to me how in the end you end up memorizing them as long as you do. It goes from 1s to 2s to 2p. 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, and so as you're going up, this is energy, uh, or most notably potential energy, um, and this is what's called an orbital energy diagram. And you'll see with boxes, each box represents one orbital, We'll tell you how to put the electrons in. You've seen a little of that already, but we'll go through it formally. And it says, note the energies of the D and F levels vary with their occupancy. Uh, we will go a little tiny bit into that and happy to answer more questions as we go. All right, so what does this mean? So let's see, according to the shape of the periodic table, as we go from 1s to 2s to 2p, According to the shape of the periodic table, this section of the periodic table is going to be the S area. It has uh, two electron, two elements wide. We will see that one orbital holds up to two electrons. This is the P area. So three orbitals. will hold up to six electrons, and that's why the P area is six elements wide, as we will see. Then with 10 elements wide, that's gonna be the D area. Five orbitals hold up to 10 electrons. And 14, this is going to be the F area. Seven orbitals. Up to 14 electrons. Now, uh, how do we get back to that previous slide where we had the order of the energy or the order of the sublevels? If you start up here, you'll see that there's a one. This is the 1s area. Helium is a noble gas. Some periodic tables also show it right here because it is in the 1s area uh, as far as placement of electrons. When we get to the end of one of the rows after 1s, ding, go back to the left. Carriage return for those of you who remember typewriters. 2s all the way across. 2p, so I'm sorry, 1s, 2s, 2p, ding, 3s. Continuing across, not in the D area yet, we gotta be down here, 3p, ding, 4s. Ah, we're now to the D area. And this is a little confusing, uh, so, but, well, anyway, you'll just have to memorize it. 3D is the first of the Ds. So this is going to be 3D. How do we know that? Well, remember that N equals the number of sublevels there are. So for N equals three, there's going to be S, P, D. We haven't seen 3D yet. Well, we should do enough electron configurations uh, that you should remember that. We'll see, but you do need to. 3D, now we're at uh, zinc here. Now we're in the P area, 4P. 
And if we come back to our picture here, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d. But just the tiniest bit higher is 3d. Uh, then 4p, and then as we keep going, we just did ding, 5s, 4d goes 3d, 4d, 5d, so 4d. And one thing you can remember is that the d's are always one principal energy level, one n value behind the s's. Um, the s's and p's are always the same though, so this is going to be 5p. Ding, 6s. We hit the asterisk. The asterisk says go down. We find our first F area. Our first F area is 4F. Back up to 3, 4, 5D. 6P. Ding, 7S. Second asterisk, 5F. 3, 4, 5, 6D. And for all of the elements that we know of so far through 118, the last one is 7P, uh, which is a little bit farther than the previous slide went to, but uh, that covers all the elements. Okay, so we're, we're, we're building up here. We're, each orbital can hold two electrons with each electron having a different value of the spin quantum number s. We're not doing quantum numbers. What we have to know is that for each of these boxes that I'm showing you, I will draw an up arrow and a down arrow. The up arrow has, uh, is called spin up and has the spin quantum number equals plus half, it's a positive one. The arrow pointing down is spin down. Equals minus one half. In parentheses means you do not have to remember the values for the spin quantum number. Uh, you do not have to remember the term spin up or spin down either. You just have to remember that there's one arrow up and one arrow down in each box, and that you may draw those arrows with a full arrowhead each or half of an arrowhead each. Either way works. Okay, Hun's rule, in parentheses, don't have to remember it, place one electron in each of the P, D, or F orbitals before pairing any electrons Let's suppose we had three electrons in the 2p sublevel. You would place one in each of the orbitals in the 2p sublevel before pairing them. Two things I can say about this. One is, uh, if you think about pairing electrons, electrons are negative things, so if you put them in the same orbital, they're going to repel each other, and that's why they go each in separate sublevels, sorry, separate orbitals in the same sublevel first. Uh, the other thing is they always go either spin up all of them or spin down all of them. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, some people are more optimistic and put all spin up. Some people are more pessimistic and put all spin down. Uh, I, actually, I don't know if those go together, but what's important is you can't put up, down, up and have it be correct. Happy to talk more about that in office hours, but that's what we have to do. Uh, electrons occupy the lowest energy uh, orbitals available. Sometimes the electron tells us what that energy level is. We'll talk about that. No two electrons may have the same four quantum numbers. Not an issue for us. Write the ground state electron configuration and the orbital energy diagram for the chlorine atom. Well, we still have 
our handy dandy periodic table, it tells us that the chlorine atom is, uh, has 17 electrons. has 17 protons as well. Remember, atoms have equal numbers of protons and electrons. 17 electrons, um, according to the shape of the periodic table, we will start up here when what's the 1s? The 1s sublevel has one orbital, which will hold a max of two electrons. The two is a superscript typically, although if you put it just as a number, as long as I can tell, I'm happy. 1s, ding, 2s, two electrons, 2p, six electrons. We have now placed 10 electrons into the orbitals and sublevels, uh, really sublevels so far, of the uh, chlorine atom. Ding, 3s, 2, 3p. 3p holds six electrons, but in order to get to 17 electrons, one, two, three, four, we only need five. So we end right here in the 3p area, and we have p5 because there are only five electrons, and we have 17 total. That's as many as we're allowed to put in there. That's as many as a chlorine atom has. This is the electron configuration for the chlorine atom. Now let's draw the orbital energy diagram. I typically draw orbital energy diagrams just with energy instead of potential energy here. Either one is fine though. Then draw the order of the sublevels, each sublevel with its appropriate number of orbitals. Start with 1s. The spacing of them I'm not too concerned about as long as you have the right order. So 1s is lower than 2s. Is lower than 2p. Then 3s and 3p. And you do, for the orbital energy diagram, have to put in the arrows. So one, two in the 1s, one, two. In the 2s, one, two, three. Into 2p, four, five, six. It's in there somewhere. There it is into the 2p, that's all six of them. Now 3s, one, two, 3p, one, two, three, four, five. That is the orbital energy diagram for the chlorine atom. That seems a good place to stop for this video. We'll pick up there next time.